Hello, hello. Hello. Hey. Hey, welcome to Postman Student Community Stream. While folks are jumping into today's stream, let us know where you're joining us from. Let me quickly display that across the screen so folks know what we're hoping you share with us. Cool. If you don't yet know about the student community here at Postman, we basically promote API literacy and education among students and educators through a couple of different programs, which you can find out about on our student program webpage. Let me share that across the screen real quick. There you go. Cool. So while you're taking a look at that, let me introduce myself. My name is Ruby and I'm a senior developer advocate on the student programs team here at Postman. I host these streams with my co-host Isaac. Isaac, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Ruby. Hello, everyone. My name is Isaac Atif and I'm a developer advocate also on the student programs team here at Postman. And I'm super excited to be here back again with Ruby with a brand new stream. We brought a special guest today. Everyone, please welcome our special Postman guest. Hi, everyone. I'm Carson Hunter. I uh, am a Postmanot. My technical title is Technical Enablement Architect. So I work with our solutions engineering team on building demos and helping to make sure that, you know, everyone who's giving demos to a customer has a great demo to provide and, you know, make sure they're getting the most out of Postman. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Nice. Isaac, do you want to let folks know what we typically do on our streams? Typically, we are on air bi-weekly with a regular streaming event for the Postman student community. If you tune into our stream, you'll catch us trying something different almost every episode. Sometimes we'll have student leaders from our community. Other times we'll have guest Postmanots like Carson. And we'll do other things like explore public APIs, build things, learn together, uh, something new every time. So you just got to stay tuned in. But what do we have on the agenda today, Ruby? Yeah, so I'm glad, uh, Carson, you were able to introduce yourself. A uh, little tidbit of knowledge we left out is that Carson and I used to be teammates. Uh, we were both technical enablement architects uh, for a while. So I'm really excited to have Carson on the stream. Feels like I got my old teammate with us. Um, still my teammate, of course. Um, but yeah, we're happy to have Carson because she was part of a hackathon not that long ago. Um, and she was the grand prize winner along with her teammate, her partner. I think it was Andrew at the time. Yeah. yeah. So Carson, do you want to walk us through what that hackathon was? What did you submit? What kind of inspired you? Yeah, so I've done two hackathons in my life. One was at an internal hackathon at my last job. Um, you know, it's kind of smaller scale. I won that one. And then I did the Postman hackathon and, um, you know, get into the details of that with my coworker, Andrew DiCarlo, and we ended up winning that one as well. So, um, you know, a good track record, but a very small sample size and had great partners both times. So I'm not, you know, claiming victory just for me, but um, kind of what the project was about. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen, I guess. It might help um, kind of facilitate this. So um, the hackathon for Postman was um, called the Postman API hack, and they were I'm um, going to reveal the winners at Postman Galaxy, which was the Postman conference in January 2021. So the hackathon was a little before that. Um, it was like beginning of January to end of January. And so um, the challenge was to create some sort of utility that made developers' lives easier. And this was around the time that public workspaces were getting unveiled. And so you were to create a public workspace that kind of had everything you need in Postman to make a developer's life with Postman easier. And so what we ended up doing was a project called Documentor. Um, I'm trying to find the right uh, place. So. Our tagline was your current Postman docs, but better. So I, um, at my last job, we had, you know, a couple of APIs that we loved using Postman for, you know, we used it for our development, we used it for testing. We wanted to use it for documentation to kind of share it with our, you know, consumers, but there are a couple things that it was missing before we could really do that. Um, and so what that was, was that we, we find the tab. So we had this Swagger documentation. If you're familiar with Swagger or Open API, it's you know kind of another way to describe an API. Um, you usually see it as like a YAML or a JSON file 
where it has kind of every single element of your API. And then you would share this link with your developers and it kind of gives, um, you know, an overview of a lot of the same things you would see in Postman nowadays, just uh, formatted a little bit differently. And so what we really, really loved about the Swagger documentation was that when you're doing either a put request or a post request, something where you're sending, you know, you're sending a request body uh, to get some data back, um, Swagger Open API lets you document it with these kind of schema models where you can um, document each uh, parameter, you can expand them, you can kind of see everything you need to put in these more complicated objects that you'll be sending into the API. And we just couldn't kind of figure out how to do that with Postman. And so we made a suite of tools to make that possible. And what we came up with was a kind of two-parter. Uh, we had this model creation collection with Salt, which solved that problem. And then we had the documentation assistant, which was kind of like, um, you know, measuring the code coverage almost of your documentation. So making sure you had all the right documentation things. And so- Kaisa, um, can I ask a yeah. quick question? So you mentioned the model creation uh, collection here solved a problem. Can you remind us what that problem was? Yeah. So. Um, if you think back, I don't know how many of you are using Postman maybe two or three years ago. Postman didn't used to have kind of the rich request level documentation that it does today. So this is a screenshot from a video where I was kind of walking through Postman at the time. And so you would have the name of your request up here and then a little um, kind of place to put markdown. Um, these tables are something that we inserted with our project, but if you compare that to what um, Postman looks like today. So if we go to a request and you see um, like down here, Postman will automatically generate this um, documentation where it has, you know, all of your parameters. It has your um, kind of some documentation. And then if you go into a post request, it'll kind of do the same thing. It will, you know, write out the body, it'll write out your path variables, things like that. Um, as well as now, if you go into an API and look at the documentation, if you scroll down, sorry for all the scrolling, don't want to make anyone <laughs> dizzy, but let's find a one with a post request. Maybe up here. So if we go and you're creating a network user, so you're sending this user object in a post request, and this is really wanted what we wanted for our docs. It's now inside the product, but yes. here you can see, you know, you need to create a app property. That's a string. Here's an example of what that would look like and kind of some documentation. So we're kind of trying to mimic that uh, without having seen it in the product before. So to kind of give you an example of what that would look like, here is, I think this is the right one. This is kind of what our Postman collection would look like beforehand. Um, you know, we would have our documentation. Just imagine, you know, above this line didn't exist. It was just kind of our little description. And once you run this model creation collection, so it was a combination of us using the Postman API and an API we built ourselves, it would kind of create a fork of your collection, um, do some magic to generate some models. And then after you kind of completed the process, this is kind of the after effect of what your collection would look like. So if we go into the same request, you can see that now we have this um, table that describes all of the models that are used inside this request. And so it tells you kind of the name of the model, the location, the linking is broken now because some Postman updates but it would link you to this new folder that was created. So it created this folder and would list out every single kind of API model that was in your, that we found in your API. So it would kind of generate these tables where it would have the property description and type of, you know, the types of things you would need to send into the API. So I know it's a little bit complicated, but it's in the interest of, you know, making sure people knew what they were supposed to send. And it was kind of our way of working around um, the things that we thought were lacking in the product. And now it's built in and we couldn't be happier. And yeah, so- it's, re it's really crazy, uh, those moments that you were saying, it's hard to imagine this not being here now that we have all those updates. 
Um, but it's excellent that you and your teammate were able to wrap your heads around this gap and creatively think through a solution. This is super cool. Makes sense that you got the prize. <laughs> yeah, and we have a part two as well. Um, so this model creation was kind of Andrew's brainchild. You know, he was my manager at my old job and he was just like a brilliant systems designer. And so um, he came up with this kind of pattern of updating everything and I thought it was really clever. Um, and my kind of like passionate work was making sure, uh, one, I really love Postman. I would like consume all of the Postman content that I could. And so I was really familiar with kind of how to create a well-documented collection. And I wanted to see how we could share that and make sure everyone else was documenting their collections uh, well. And so I created this documentation assistant and it did a couple of things. And so I'm gonna switch over to here. These are kind of some graphics I made for the submission. Um, so what you could do is you could grab a collection you've already started to document. You could run it through the documentation assistance algorithm, and then you would use the Postman Visualizer to kind of get a report on what you still had left to do. So you could either use the Postman Visualizer or you could use Slack. So I don't know if I can make this bigger. If you set this up with your Slack instance, um, I kind of had a Slack bot where it would do the same thing. You could plug in your collection and you'd get kind of a personalized report. So this one, it looks like sweet. It looks like you've already added some collection level documentation. It looks like your folders are documented. Um, here's some fixes that we recommend. And then it would give you kind of an emoji report card at the end. So if you were like 80 to 100% complete, you'd get the um, sunglasses emoji. And then further <laughs> down you went, you'd get kind of like a progressively sadder emoji, or like a special <laughs> one. If you got 100%, it's like really hard to do. Um, so this one actually still works. I don't know if I still have it yet. So I've gone ahead and plugged in a collection. You can kind of see the formatting's a little weird, but it'll show you all tasks, tasks that are incomplete on your collection and things that you've already done and same for a workspace. Uh, if you go to the visualize tab, it'll kind of give you an overview of the collections in your workspace the percent complete that they are, and then the ID if you wanna like plug it back into a collection report. So there's a very long video that explains this that I submitted for the hackathon if anyone's really curious uh, how it worked in its heyday, but that's kind of the overview of what was going on with that. Yeah, awesome. I shared that I shared that public workspace with uh, the viewers in the chat. So definitely if you're curious, I know I am, uh, play around with that everyone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we have a couple folks when, uh, you know, earlier on we had asked where folks are joining us in from. We have some folks responding that they came in from Nepal. Looks like we have ooh, a couple other folks, folks from Pakistan here. We have Nick complimenting my lights. Thanks, Nick. I do love my lights. <laughs> some folks from Argentina. Um, and Carson, I don't know if you had seen this earlier, but Hannah is uh, complimenting your project, which it is a very excellent, very great project. Oh, hello, Hannah. Great to see you. <laughs> we had some um, supernovas in the chat, too, I think. Um, maybe they were just here for the beginning, but great to see so many folks joining. Yeah, we have Chen yeah. here as well. Cool. Um, so, Carson, are you um, all set showing us what you were working on? Because we have a couple questions for you. Yeah, I'm going to stop screen sharing so I can try and look back in the camera uh, get did, my setup back. <laughs> I did want to make one note, Carson. Your project looked really awesome, and it, or it does remind me of, of like hackathon projects where, you know, uh, it, it took it was a team effort. That's what it looked like. So that was awesome. Just to note, great job again. Thanks. Definitely a team effort. You know, something I thought about doing myself, but it was made a lot better by someone else who could come in, help to brainstorm, help to build things out. So that's like one of my tips going in is, you know, find someone who you could collaborate with. Yeah. So, um, Carson, you had mentioned that the teammate that you were working with was brilliant. Uh, very smart partner. You, of course, as well. Um, something I'm curious about, and I'm sure other beginner hackathon participants are curious about, are there hackathons that are beginner friendly? Yeah, definitely. So um, if you go to DevPost, which is kind of the platform where the Postman hackathon was submitted or created, I don't know about any other 
giant hackathon platforms, but I was looking through there today. They do have some tagged beginner friendly, um, which would be a great place to start. Um, and I would say, you know, even if something isn't tagged beginner friendly, you know, entering it is a great way to just, you know, practice your skills, get another project on your res on your resume under your belt. Even if you don't win, you know, I've learned so much by just building projects that, you know, maybe no one ever saw. So I think that would be a great idea as well. If you can't find one that really calls to you in the beginner friendly zone. Yeah. You had mentioned earlier uh, when you were introducing the API hack hackathon that it started January 5th. How long was that hackathon? So the, the whole month? It was like January 5th to the 25th. So it was about three to four weeks, which I think is a good amount of time for a hackathon. Okay. I was going to ask, is that like the typical time frame for a hackathon? I've seen some now that maybe go a little bit longer. Maybe they're, you know, six weeks. I, again, have only done two, so I'm not a hackathon expert, but I think in the age of kind of digital hackathons, they can leave them open for a little longer. You know, people aren't sleeping in a convention center. You know, it's a little bit more relaxed. So even if one's already started and there's maybe a couple weeks left, I think that's enough time for you to jump in, you know, put in a couple good weekends of work and, um, you know, get something going. That's yeah. uh, how that's, did you go ahead? I, I was going to make a note on what Carson oh. just said sleeping in convention centers. That's the best part about going to a hackathon. Uh, so, uh, my friend fell asleep, uh, and I have a picture of him just like fall like slumped underneath a whiteboard with his pillow and his blanket. So, makes for fun stories. Oh, that's commitment. <laughs> I'd love to do more in person ones. I think it's like a great way to build community and make friends and stuff. Looking forward to more of those opening up. Yeah. Uh, speaking of community events, I know Postman has um, our events page. I know Space Camp has had a couple of in-person events. Um, Isaac, if you don't mind tossing in a link to Postman Space Camps, um, there sure. are uh, in-person events there that go on pretty often that we can share with folks. Um, and for those folks who are curious, we did, we currently have across the screen, our Postman Student Program link. So feel free to explore that. Um, again, this is a Postman Student Programs stream. So uh, we're representing the student community here. And if you wanna check out what we work on, you can feel free to visit that site. Um, but continuing to ask uh, my friend Carson here some questions about hackathons. Uh, we just asked how long they typically last. Um, and if they are beginner friendly, it sounds like they are, and they kind of range um, with how long they last. How did you, Carson, uh, discover the one that you participated in? Yeah, so I, uh, I say this all the time. I've been a Postman fangirl for quite a while. So um, at my last company, I was kind of the person responsible for getting everyone, you know, up and running with our Postman instance. I kind of managed it. So with that, I was, you know, kind of responsible for keeping up with all the latest releases. I read like all the blogs, all the newsletters that were coming out, and I had heard them kind of talk about this and I knew it was coming up. And so that would be one tip that I would give to people, you know, if you have kind of a niche interest, if you have a software that you really like to use, you know, make sure you sign up for their communications. Something like this may pop up or, you know, maybe you see it on dev posts, but even if you have never heard of the software before, I would recommend kind of digging into their, you know, communications just to get a vibe of what they like, you know, what's going on. I think it can be a really great way to kind of connect with the people that are at that company as well. So long story short, heard it through the newsletter, I think. <laughs> Nice. I know we also have a community forum uh, for Postman as well. There's lots of chatter in there as well. And I think there's an events page within the community forum that folks can check out too. Um, but another question for you, uh, Carson, and maybe Isaac as well, if you want to chime in on this one. Um, are there other ways that folks typically find out about hackathons? Hmm. Yeah, that's a great so question. I, go ahead, Carson. Yeah, go ahead, Isaac. <laughs> Okay, I'll go. I'll, I'll I, yeah. <laughs> you, Isaac, I'm shutting up. <laughs> one last, uh, so one, you mentioned DevPost. That's, that was like the tool, a uh, really popular tool a few years ago. Uh, now we have an event coming up. I guess we can talk about Hacktoberfest if now is an okay time. Yeah. Yeah, so Hacktoberfest um, is a month long hacking themed event that uh, it's hosted by DigitalOcean, and you can contribute to open source. So I'll also let uh, Ruby and Carson share more about it, but that's one great way to find hackathons and events. 
either online or in person in your city. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So there you go. You can see it there. Yeah, so I just have uh, their web page open here. It's just hacktoberfest.com. If anybody wanted to check that out, that is an upcoming um, hackathon. Looks like registration's still open. Um, I believe this goes on all of October. Yep, it's for the entire month of October. Um, and you get to basically learn how to contribute to open source. And the, the, whole, the whole idea is to motivate everyone, all, all types of uh, developers or people from all like levels of knowledge or experience to contribute something. It doesn't have, it can be code related or it can be non-code related. So you can also contribute technical writing. I think I also saw on a table that you can contribute a uh, video, like as a, as a design contribution, you can contribute video documentation uh, as a, you know, as a, as a contribution. And there's really no, there's no bar here. Anyone can join in and, and partake in it. Yeah, so we know Hacktoberfest is coming up soon. Um, in the past at Postman and within the student programs, we had API Fest. I believe that was earlier this year in March. Um, and we have some blog articles with highlights about that hackathon as well. Um, lots of folks in our student community now came from the hackathon. So wildly successful, lots of fun. Uh, but speaking of our community um, and where you can find those folks that were in those previous hackathons, we do have a student discord. Um, so if you follow that link, you can join our discord community. We have a ton of really supportive, really talented folks that are student experts, student leaders. Um, and we have some classroom educators joining us as well pretty soon. Um, but yeah, you can go into our Discord community to find out more and um, connect with these folks. Maybe network around within Discord too. Maybe find your next hackathon partner. Yeah, that's true. You can always network and connect with a new partner. Cool. Let me see, what other questions do I have for my friend Carson here? Um, we talked about if they're beginner friendly. Uh, oh yes, here's a great question. What advice do you wish someone gave you as you were going into this hackathon in particular? That's a good question. Um, hmm. I had never done like a public hackathon before, so I didn't really know kind of the expectation for uh, what, you know, the final product should look like in terms of, you know, should I do a video, should I do um, documentation? So I really went kind of over the top with, you know, I documented the public workspace within an inch of his life. I made kind of a long video. I created some graphics in Canva to submit. Um, you know, I wish I would have had a little bit more experience seeing how past winners kind of, you know, formatted their response, kind of what resonated. So I wish I would have known that you could go into DevPost, look at past hackathons and kind of see what succeeded, you know, Postman hadn't done a previous hackathon, so you don't know like exactly what those judges are looking for. But you know, Google and AWS are doing these hackathons, you know, quite a bit, and so there are going to be some really great examples of kind of what you should tick off for your own project. And so I think that would be a good tip. And then if you do happen to win, make sure you set aside a lot of the money for taxes and get your tax stuff figured out. Talk to someone who knows what they're talking about. But I can't give you tax advice. But that's just a disclaimer. <laughs> Um, that's a solid point to keep in mind. I think that's something maybe a lot of folks aren't actually thinking about because you see that dollar sign and um, you don't expect that. So that's something to look out for, for sure. Um, here is something that Claire mentioned in our chat. It usually doesn't cost anything to participate in a hackathon. You only have skills and money to gain, minus taxes. But uh, this is very true. Um, it doesn't hurt at all to participate in a hackathon. There's just learning opportunities and an opportunity to win with your teammates. Exactly. Like during this point in time when uh, this hackathon was happening, you know, I was home due to COVID. So I had nothing but free time. You know, my partner was out of town, so I was looking for a way to kill time. So, you know, it's a great investment of your time. Even if you don't win, you're learning a ton. You've got this project to show off. So I can't recommend it enough. For sure. Um, I know when you work with teammates, um, even when you're pair programming, we had an episode not that long ago about pair programming best practices. What were some things um, that you had to keep in mind when you were working with your teammate? Yeah, so um, during this hackathon, we were working remotely. So we were in different states. We couldn't kind of meet up to talk about it. 
Um, and I guess before I'd even asked him, I had thought a lot about, you know, is this worth his time? Because he was a senior developer at the company. I knew he had a lot of stuff going on. And so I was like, I mean, he's Postman expert. He's a great programmer. He loves Postman as well. You know, if we win, I think it's going to, you know, he'll be really happy. And so I wanted to make sure I was respecting his time and wanted to make sure he knew that I wasn't expecting him to work 25 days straight. And so um, kind of in terms of the question was about managing time or communicating. I mean, either one. Uh, what was the experience like in general working with a teammate? Sorry, I got off track a little bit, but uh, we had an initial kind of Zoom brainstorm session. So I came in with some ideas, you know, I didn't want to spring it on him and then be like, give me your best ideas. So I had some already seated and then he came up with some as well. And we kind of, you know, compromised and merged forces. Um, so I think that's good to kind of make sure you're on the same page. I think, you know, a voice or video call works best for that instead of typing your uh, responses out. That can, takes me a while to get my thoughts out on paper. Um, and then kind of we stayed in touch via Slack since we were already coworkers, but maybe you're on Discord or, um, you know, WhatsApp, just having some way to communicate, you know, for a while I would kind of do my project and then give them an update. I think it's important to check in regularly, you know, don't wait until the night before it's due and then be like, okay, what'd you make? Um, it's good to, you know, set expectations. Um, at the beginning, I told him, you know, I have a lot of time to work on this, but I know you know, you have a lot more personal responsibilities, you have a lot more work responsibilities. So, you know, only do what you're comfortable doing. And we kind of set those boundaries. Um, so that's a good thing to do. And then as far as communicating within your project, um, I know when I was a newer developer, it was hard for me to kind of grasp how you could work with someone on version control and on Git. And so I think this is a good time to practice, you know, only working with one or maybe a few other people um, on the same repository in a pretty low stakes way. Like you're not going to mess up your company's GitHub repository or something. Great way to practice those pull requests and commenting and merges. Um, so in that way, I would say kind of have a messaging platform of choice. Um, Claire mentioned Loom. Uh, I've started using this a lot. It kind of lets you record in your browser. It's a browser extension. You can you know record something late at night and be like this is what i made and then send it over the, send it over the wall they can watch it on their own time send one back uh, that's a great way instead of typing everything out i big fan of loom and any sort yeah. of similar thing so i was just gonna say advice. yeah i was just gonna say carson i know that you use loom extensively uh carson's also a loom ambassador <laughs> um yeah. but yeah we did get a great question in the chat here do you have to know code to get involved in a hackathon? That's a good question. That's Isaac a good question. Yeah, do you want to talk about kind of what you're talking about with technical writing? Sure. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I know you, you know, everyone might have that on their mind. Uh, if you're going into a hackathon and it's your first first time, or there's a lot of people that are really like have been to a lot of hackathons and there might be veterans or experts. You might be wondering that. So no, you don't need to know how to code. Um, you can really just come in and be open to learn. And that's really what everyone there is for. So as Carson mentioned, there's different ways you can contribute to your team. You can do technical writing, you can do documentation. Uh, in my first hackathon, we had a teammate who just came and got us waters and made sure that we were like good to go. And he also did help us with the idea and the pitch as well. So the biggest, one of the biggest uh, things you should have is a pitch. So sometimes people are just better at just pitching an idea and they might not know how to code. So you might find your strengths when you go out there. So the short answer to your question, um, no, you don't need to, to know exactly how to code. There's so many ways you can take in a hackathon. For sure, there's a lot of different ways to contribute. Um, even on a team, you don't necessarily have to be the person who drives the code. Um, and it looks like Claire answered that or addressed that question in the chat, mentioning that you can keep your eyes peeled for upcoming events and announcement on our student Discord. I'm going to flash the Discord link across the screen really quickly. Um, you can go ahead and grab that and join our Discord community for our updates on any hackathons that are coming up. We did also recently set up a student LinkedIn um, where you can find some updates about events and upcoming things that are uh, happening. 
So feel free to follow that LinkedIn page as well for updates. And yeah, I think, uh, Carson, did you have any other thoughts on hackathons that you were eager to share? Um, I really had a few thoughts. Um, a couple of things I wanted to mention, you know, maybe you're getting, trying to decide what sort of hackathon you want to do. I love that DevPost has like different causes that you can get involved with. So there's a hackathon for like health causes or, you know, maybe towards a specific charity or nonprofit. I think that's a great kind of entry point if you are trying to figure out what you're interested in. Um, Claire mentioned low code, no code. I would love to see kind of the projects that come out of that. Um, and then kind of, oh, um, we were talking about forming a group, where to find people. Um, you all mentioned the Discord. I mean, having a student community, like of people who are interested in APIs is really the best. Uh, and on just on, sorry, DevPost, a lot of uh, software starting with D. There's also a place for <laughs> participants who are interested in joining the hackathon. Uh, you know, you can sign up, they're kind of free agents. And so that's where you can kind of go find someone who, you know, complements your skill set. On DevPost, you can build out your profile, like these are the technologies I know, so you can find someone. If you're a back-end engineer, find a front-end engineer, join forces, create something really cool. Um, so that could be a great place as well to find uh, someone to hack with. Yeah, something else I was wondering, you mentioned that some of these hackathons have uh, themes like healthcare and other industries, I'm sure. Um, are there other things that folks should expect from a hackathon? Like if I'm just walking into a hackathon, are there any constraints that, that typically are present at hackathons that I should be aware of? Yeah, so each hackathon will have their own kind of set of rules. Um, I know DevPost isn't available in every country, so you'll want to check that like your country is not a limiting factor. You know, the company that you work for can sometimes be a limiting factor. You know, if you're a student, it might not apply as much. Uh, sometimes universities have hackathons where you have to be a student. Um, so those are good things to look out for. Just make sure before you start putting work in that you are eligible to participate. And then be sure to you know, read all of the requirements for an entry. So you don't want to put all this work into a project and then, you know, you see the requirement that you should have had a video or you should have had, you know, public GitHub repository. Just keep all these things in mind and maybe factor in an extra day to kind of meet all of these uh, different things that they're asking for, uh, just in case something sneaks up on you that you didn't see when you were originally looking. Yeah, speaking of factoring in some extra time, we have a question here from Claire. Any tips for narrowing down a project idea under time pressure? It's a great question. Um, yeah, when we started, we had, yeah, go ahead, Isaac. Um, I have a story, but you already started. I'll, I'll add mine after you. Okay, I'll give a quick overview. So we had, you know, quite an ambitious project and we knew that kind of this model creation bit was gonna be the hardest and it was gonna be the most time consuming because we're building our own API. So I would say start with the hardest part, you know, the part that's gonna be, you know, the biggest one to get out of the way. And I like to save the fun stuff for the end because I would love to stay up all night and, you know, hack on the fun stuff, but it's a little more, you know, not as fun to stay up when it's a grind. So I like to save the fun stuff for the end for me, that's kind of, you know, putting together the marketing material and creating the presentation. So get the hardest, most important stuff out of the way, save the fun stuff for when you're running out of time because you'll have the adrenaline. That's my advice. Nice. Isaac, what did you want to add? That's a great, great, uh, that's a great point, person. I was just going to add a short story about basically the time that my, pro uh, my team's project was uh, almost didn't get delivered. So basically, uh, we, we, me and my friends went to a hackathon and our idea was based around, we wanted to make an Amazon Alexa uh, skill and use using voice, like make a whole app. The problem was <laughs> the microphone wasn't working. <laughs> so uh, we had to figure out uh, a workaround and eventually the microphone did work, but by that, by then we only had a couple of hours. So instead of just making like one really big, cool app idea, we re, we made a really great pitch and we made a uh, an idea that was we essentially made like a stem learning platform um i can throw the link as well if anyone is interested in the chat but yeah that was we were pressed by time and we faced uh an obstacle and the way we overcame that is we came together and we asked ourselves well you know 
well, who can who can take care of like design, who can take care of like this aspect of the app and who wants to work out the idea for the pitch. Uh, it really helps when you communicate and, you know, figure out what, what you can deliver, uh, what you can't, and then make a goal based off of that. So that helped a lot. And uh, that story is always a fun one. We were known as a tea table. Oh gosh, I can yeah. imagine that being very stressful, especially with the microphone, like the key tool. <laughs> yeah, we, we um, one director's pick, so it was it was worth it. Yeah, we have another question here: um, How to make your project stand out among hundreds? Any pointers there? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I don't know a lot of feedback from the project, like what they like, what they didn't like, and I've never judged a hackathon, but. Um, one thing that I noticed that we were looking through, I feel like ours is maybe the most well-documented, which kind of fits since our project is about documentation. We couldn't leave it undocumented or it would kind of defeat the whole purpose. But, you know, we really covered all of our bases. We documented every part of the public workspace. We filled out our, you know, public postman profiles. We wrote everything down in dev posts. We made our code open source and documented that. I created a video. I created, you know, screenshots and graphics. So. You really want to make sure you're getting the point across. You know, some people like to watch videos. Some people hate watching videos and they would rather read it. So um, convince people why they should use your product, why it's useful. Don't leave anything to the imagination. Like, don't say, they'll see why this is useful if I just write the code. Like, you really have to kind of show and tell and do all the things and make sure, you know, it stands out. So, yeah. That'd be I like idea. that. Um to echo off what you said, Carson, um, the why really matters. The why is very important, whether you're, it's a hackathon idea you're pitching, but in a why it's very important. Yeah, Definitely. I also, I appreciate that you covered like all of the modalities because so you never know how people prefer receiving information. Um, that's true for learners as well. Uh, not everybody just wants to, s I mean, I know the project was about documentation, but not everybody can read a bunch of stuff and assume and know the value of what's going on. Some folks do like to see through video. Um, so it's great that, you know, that was something that you did to help your project stand out. I'm sure other folks can try that on as well. Um, it looks like we are, there was another question here I wanted to highlight and then I just I had lost it. So many folks in the chat. <laughs> I had a- uh, Go ahead, Isaac, while I look yeah. for it. Some notes too. Um, yeah, I, I was going to ask Carson, what was your favorite memory of and Ruby too? If you have one, what is what was your favorite hackathon memory, or if you, if you've attended one, or uh, watched one, you know, what was your favorite hackathon memory? Question for the audience as well. Yeah, probably the first hackathon I did. That was the internal hackathon. Um, I was a pretty junior developer and I was paired up with one of our senior developers. So I was back end, he was front end and the teams were assigned. And so, um, you know, he uh, did a lot of the UX work. I did what I could on the back end. I contributed a lot like ideas and data visualizations, but um, I was responsible for doing our presentation and I prepared this whole Shark Tank themed uh, pitch to our judges and it went over uh, pretty well, but like you were saying, Isaac, this is an in-person one, and the memories you make when you're, you know, working late, hacking on a project, things are going wrong. Like it really can't be beat. So if you have the chance to do an in-person hackathon, I'd recommend it. For sure. Absolutely. So I found the comment that I wanted to highlight here. You can contribute to a hackathon in basically every way, and then emphasizing that Claire here added. Um, that lots of hackathon projects require different skill sets. So you could be an expert in UI and UX or feel like you are and feel confident enough to contribute in that way as well. Um, but speaking on a favorite memory, I remember coming right out of a coding boot camp. Uh, one of my classmates, she wanted to get into a hackathon. And so we were building out a healthcare app and we wanted to do it using something we just learned, uh, which was Django and uh, Python. And so implementing both of those in a new application and having that learning opportunity and to cement what we just learned um, was something that I really cherished. Um, so that was that was my experience. Um, it wasn't in person, it was online. So I think that was uh, unique about that experience. What was your worst hackathon memory? I just, an I just saw this question too and I was answering it. Uh, my worst hackathon memory was when they ran out of pizza and snacks. 
because uh, there were a lot of there were a lot of people that were not happy about that. But then they they actually came and they brought back fuel. So you just saw a lot of uh, starving like hack like hackers driven mad almost like ripping apart a box of like Oreos. So it was kind of funny. <laughs> It's like Ninja Turtles with the pizza. Yeah. Nice. I had to choose the worst hackathon memory. This isn't nearly as bad as that, but I remember it was like the last day before we were supposed to submit this hackathon entry for the Postman API hack. And I was trying to record that video that I showed you a screenshot of. And the video, the whole walkthrough was like 15 minutes just to try and get everything in there. And I ended up having to record it like three or four times because stuff kept going wrong. Like the garage door would open and it would be so loud or, you know, my <laughs> mic would cut out or something. So by the time I got a, a good version, I was almost hoarse. So it doesn't compare to running out of pizza, but something I remember. For sure. My worst memory is definitely related to technology. Um, so figuring out how to collaborate with Git, I was just newly trying that out and running into all kinds of merge conflicts and having miniature heart attacks about that and feeling like I'm going to lose the entire project. Um, yeah, I would say that was my worst memory, but we got through it. Everything was a learning opportunity. That will ruin your day. It's all about the learning experience, guys, right? Exactly. For sure. And the friends we make along the way. <laughs> it's all about the journey. For sure. So Carson, did you want to add anything else? Because uh, we can, we do have a Kahoot game for folks to participate in. But if you have any closing remarks or additions you want to make, let's definitely mention those. I think that's all I had in my brain to share. Let's jump into the Kahoot. Awesome. So for those folks um, who are new to our stream, we, whenever we have a couple minutes left together, we jump on to a Kahoot game to see what folks are able to take away from our episode. I always love seeing who makes it onto our leaderboard with the most correct answers. I think we had, um, was it Glad Alpaca uh, a couple episodes ago that was leading the PACA? That was um, our t uh, one of our, our student members, Chetan, I found out who was the Glad Alpaca, um, but that was really fun. Um, if you've never used Kahoot, it's a quiz game that you can play for free with all of us right now by logging into kahoot.it on your phone's browser or on your desktop browser in like a new tab. Once you're on kahoot.it, you can enter the code that you'll see on our screen in just a second. Looks like Isaac's working on pulling that up, but while he's put it, pulling that up, feel free to log into kahoot.it. Oh, Ruby, do you want me to uh, share it this time? Yeah. OK. Gotcha. Give me one moment. You're going to see a, a matrix. Uh, I already got it. Cool. Right. Looks like, uh, Isaac, you, you were able to find it. Yes. You ready to I'm, get started? Yep. I'm switching over to the, this is last week, so I'm just switching over to the other one we had. Cool. Well, while folks are waiting for the code to come up on their okay. screen. I got it. Oh, looks like you have it. Awesome. Yeah. So, so the code will... is classic mode. Just as a reminder, you can log pins. into kahoot.it and enter that game pin, 6529136. Everyone can see the pin? Yes. Oops, oh. my bad. There we go. All right, cool, making sure. All right, let's see what clever names we get in this game. I really love Glad Alpaca. I wonder if anybody gets that again. We also had duck quack or something like this the last time there was a dr duck that won last time dr duck yeah that was uh nice one of my favorite we should have a uh, uh like and like a game for go who winners <laughs> we should like cool we got roll. snowy bison mountain bison creative lark fast ostrich lively lark focused lemming wow these are some interesting names all right 
Radiant hair. Oh. I think I like the, the snowy bison. That's my favorite name. I like radiant hair, but I'm biased because I have uh, pet rabbits. Fast ostrich <laughs> is really calling to me. <laughs> that's something I. That's something I learned. Uh, a new thing I learned about you, Ruby, is that you have a pet rabbit. I have two actually. Um, so it looks like we're ready to get started. The start button's available there, Isaac. Okay. So we can jump on in. Let me take this off. Cool. All right, here's the first question. Isaac, feel free to read it off for us. Sure. All right, first question. What was the name of Carson's hackathon project at the Postman API hack? Was it... Should I read the answer or let everyone just go through it? Yes. Was yeah, it feel Pokemon free to read it. Finder, Tour Buddy, Stemtastic, or, or Documentor? Make your choices now. Hmm. Tutor Buddy. Postman Out Friend Finder sounds like it could be a cool app. I would like to find more Postman Out Friends. I do need Tutor Buddy. <laughs> All well, right. Let's. The answer We've was got a couple folks. Yeah. So the hackathon project name was Documentary. We got folks across the board, but nobody picked Stemtastic, it looks like. Nice. All right. Let's continue. Okay. Fast Ostrich on the top of the leaderboard. Come on, Snowy Bison. I believe in you. All right. Next question. What man? Hint. She is an architect. Is she a technical enablement architect? Is she an ancient Greco-Roman design architect? Is she an architect, a boat builder? Or is she a technical solutions architect? Choose one. This one's tricky. I know she loves boats. Do you actually She's love a career boats? change after seeing these. Yeah. Career change into oh, which one? <laughs> I don't know. The boat builder sounds pretty fun. All right. The answer choice there, we got one choice for a technical enablement architect. That was correct. Oh, no wow. <laughs> Nobody chose ancient Greco-Roman design architect. I'm kind of sad. I actually, that was one of my dream jobs. Um, hmm. two, two people, people did think. <laughs> architect. Okay. We don't, but we I don't build. Both of them. Interesting. And two people chose technical solutions architect. All right. Great job, everyone. Let's move on. Oh fast goodness, ostrich fast ostrich lead. here. Wow. Creative Lark right behind him though. Postman held its own API themed series of workshops earlier this year. And it was called, was it called API Fest? Hackpalooza? Burning Pump? Or Code Cello? These are some really, uh, oh, man. really hard choice to make. I must have missed oh, Coachella. I, <laughs> I, I wish I was at the office post. for great. Yeah. Special guest Beyonce at Coachella. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> All right. And the API Fest. Good job to the three people that chose that one. Nice. And looks like we got Fast Ostrich in the lead with a streak Thanks. of three correct and nice. Awesome. Creative Lark and Mountain Bison right behind him. My money's still on Snowy Bison. Still not over. What was the name of the hack at which Carson and her teammate won the grand prize? Was it Postman Galaxy? 2021 Postman API Hack? 2021 World Martial Arts and Coding Tournament? Hiya! Or Hacktoberfest 2021? Ooh, this one's tricky. Yeah. We talked about a couple of things here. Make your best choices, everyone. I think there should be more, you know, hackathons that combine a sport with a hackathon. I like the martial arts combo. And the correct answer was Postman API hack. Nice. Ooh, Creative Lark really close behind. Fast Ostrich on top Ooh, still. Let's see how this ends. What did we discuss with Asia in our last Postman student program stream? Was it developers, do's and don'ts? Was it 
using the Twitter API v2? Was it TikTok developer memes? Or was it 10 things about Postman everyone should know? So for this mm -hmm. one, you had to be here last time in our last stream. Otherwise, you can't sit with us. I'm going to be <laughs> sad if I missed the TikTok episode. Sounds fun. Awesome. The answer was 10 things about Postman everyone should know. Good job, everyone that got that one correct. Let's see what uh, who the winner is. Ooh, Mountain Bison in third. Creative Lark, nice. OK. Nice. Bum, 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 bum. Spotlight and everything. Awesome. Nice. Congratulations, everyone. Awesome. That was a lot of fun. I love those questions. I'm over here imagining Carson building a boat and playing <laughs> or like doing martial arts while coding. <laughs> Me too. New dream of mine. Awesome. awesome. Nice. Job, um, so that was a lot of fun having you, Carson, as a guest on our stream today. We usually end our episode with a couple of highlights and shout outs of some extraordinary student community members. So recently, we've seen some folks really stand out in our Discord server, which you can join at this link. Let me quickly flash our Discord link across the screen. Well, while you're taking a look at that, I do want to mention Semi Berkas Osturk. Uh, he's really been going above and beyond to help field questions in our student experts channel. Uh, he currently also holds the expert role, so he's really going the extra mile to support his peers. Huge shout out to Semi. We see him all the time across our channels helping folks out, and that's what we love to see. We love a community that supports each other. And these are the kinds of folks that you'll find if you join our Discord and our programs in general. Awesome. Does anyone, Carson or Isaac, have other shout outs that they want to mention? Anyone really spectacular that you want to shout out? Sure, sure. Uh, shout out to Vikram and Hadi, two of our Discord community members, for just being active, sharing resources in the channel, and just being great postmanots in the community. Thank you for your contributions. We see you. Yeah. Nice. I'll shout out everyone in the chat. There are great questions. Um, you know, loved hearing about everyone else's uh, hackathon experience and loved being uh, introduced to the Postman student community. I know you all have um, a great thing going on in the Discord. I'll have to jump in there. Nice. Um, and for those who are considering checking out the Student Expert Program to earn free certification and a badge, plus be able to join exclusive expert-only events, don't forget to select live stream. Let me actually put this link across the screen. So here's where you can find our student expert application. Please select um, live stream in your application so we know how to find you if you do choose to apply. But with all that said, we'll see everyone in two weeks at the same time for the next student program stream. So long, farewell. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Thank Bye, you everyone. for coming to the stream. Bye, all.